Welcome to this MBL seminar on employment related securities options and income tax. My name is Graham Muir from CMS and I've been working in this field for more than 30 years now and so, so hopefully can lead you through this rather complex area of tax. We'll start with a little bit of background then I'll take you through the common law position and then the statutory position on exercise of an option. A brief diversion into what happens if you sell or release a share option. We'll then come on to talk about some exemptions, tax advantaged plans. I'll then talk about the impact of POE and national insurance on the tax charges. And then we'll talk a bit about the definition of what is an employment related securities option and deal with the consequences if an option is not an employment related securities option. They'll, I'll then have a brief discussion on certain cross border issues. And then lastly, I'll briefly discuss an alternative to options. Turning then to the background, what is an employee share option? Well, an employee share option is a right to acquire a specified number of shares, generally in your employing company or the parent company of the employing group. An option is exercisable at some specified time in the future. And by exercise, I mean that you pay your price and receive your shares. The exercise price that you pay is specified at grant. And sometimes exercise is also conditional on other factors, perhaps performance conditions. What then is the benefit of an employee share option? The employee gets the benefit of any excess in the value of the shares over the exercise price. And this is sometimes referred to as the option gain. That benefit is available at effectively no risk to the employee because he, he is not obliged to exercise the option, therefore is not obliged to pay the price for the shares. This assumes that as is normal, nothing is actually paid for the grant of the option or um, by the employee. So if you're not obliged to pay the price, you're not at risk. So how then does that benefit get taxed for the employee? And that is the subject of my talk today. Turning them first to the position of common law, that's before legislation intervenes. This was very unclear until a case called Abbott and Philbin in 1961. And don't worry, I'm not going to deal with the details of that case. But the case held that it is the grant of the option which is liable to income tax as earnings of the employee, but that the exercise of the option is not liable to income tax. The effect of that decision then is that the value of the option on grant less anything that you've paid for the option is liable to income tax as employment income as at the date of grant, but that the gain in value of the shares over the exercise price is liable only to capital gains tax, CGT, on the subsequent sale of the shares with no tax charge at all, whether income tax or capital gains tax, arising on the exercise of the option to when you actually receive the shares. That may sound rather counterintuitive, but the basis of the decision is that the option's value is, is money's worth given to the employee for being an employee as a reward for his work. And hence it should be liable to income tax as earnings from the employment. Conversely, the gain in value of the shares, which is accessed by exercising the option subsequently, should be treated as capital. It's received by virtue of holding the option, but not by virtue of uh, the employees being an employee or as a reward for his work. That then leads to the question, what is the value of the option at the date of grant? And that's a difficult one to, to answer and beyond the scope of our discussion today. But just to be clear, 
One thing it's not is the difference between the exercise price, the price you pay for the shares, and the value of the shares at the date of grant. And you can see that from the example of a market value option. And by a market value option, I mean one for which the exercise price is equal to the market value of the shares at the date of grant. In those circumstances, obviously that difference that I've referred to between the excise price and the value of shares is zero. And let's look at what that option is worth. If the shares go up in value, then the employee can exercise the option, acquire the shares at the higher value, and accordingly make a profit, albeit just a paper profit at that stage, but if they can sell the shares at that higher price, they make a profit. Conversely, if the, the option, sorry, if the shares go down in value, the employee merely doesn't exercise the option and suffers no cost. So there's upside, but there's no downside. And it's the value of that upside, sometimes described as the hope value, which is the value of the option. That though is very difficult to ascertain. And partly for that reason, and partly for policy reasons, HMRC, or as it was then called, the Inland Revenue, did not like this decision, and it was reversed by statute in 1966. So what is the statutory position on the exercise of an employee option? That is now set out in Chapter 5 of Part 7 of ITBA 2003, that's the Income Tax, Earnings and Pensions Act 2003. And the basic position has not changed substantively since the legislation came in in 1966. That position is that there's no income tax on the grant of an employment-related securities option, an ERSO, and we'll come back later to the specific meaning of that term. There's also no income tax on the ERSO becoming exercisable. But there is an income tax charge on the exercise of the option, i.e. when the shares are actually received on payment of the exercise price. And that income tax charge is on the value of the shares at the date of exercise over the aggregate of two things, the exercise price paid for the shares and the amount, if any, paid for the option. At this point, um, sorry, I, I referred there to if any pay for the grant of the option. As I hinted at earlier, it's actually relatively rare for the employee to pay anything or anything substantial for the option. So normally, the income tax will arise just from the difference between the value of the shares and the amount of the exercise price paid. We need now to make a, a brief diversion into, a, into the question of share valuation. What do I mean by the value of the shares at the date of exercise? 